Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Vows and More, an online vintage two-star. And today in episode number 125, we're going to take another look at how to buy a tube amp, part three. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, so you're just about to finally have some extra cash, and you've always wanted a tube amp, and your idea of a great tube amp is one that is just filled full of vacuum tubes. Well, hold on just a minute, and I'll walk you through a logical process of choosing the right type of tube amp for your room, speakers, and budget. In part one, we looked at the importance of your listening room, in particular the size. In part two, we looked at the importance of your speakers, in particular how efficient they are. In this episode, we'll look at the various types of amps and the pluses and minuses of each. Okay, let's run through the options. So, let's presume that you've got a regular sized listening room. You've got two very broad categories of amps to choose from. You've got Class A and Class AB. The Class A amps tend to be simpler, fewer tubes, lower power. Class AB tend to have more tubes, sometimes many more tubes, and we'll look at that in a minute, and they tend to have more power. So with a Class A amp, you're going to get great detail, clarity, a very fast sound. Um, you're going to get lovely harmonics, and you're not going to have to deal with too many tubes to buy. The negative of a Class A is you're not going to have as much power. You tend to have a little less bass. You're going to have tubes that are running full-time, 100% duty cycle. That's what Class A is. So you're going to have more heat. Potentially, depends on how many tubes you've got. It's not Class A is really not a great rock and roll amp. It's more for refined music, jazz, acoustic, vocal, small ensemble, uh, traditional country, even electronica. If it's not too complex, sounds amazing on Class A. Trust me. Now, over on Class B, we get power, we get bass. We also get heat because we got a lot of tubes. Even though the tubes, the power tubes, are running a little bit more than 50% duty cycle, so they're, they're only pumping out the, the music about half the time. It's really roughly 60% of the time, but let's say half the time. Um, it's really a rock and roll amp, um, and it's going to have good drive. On the negative side of a Class A B amp, you're going to have your harmonics get cancelled out at the last stage, at the power tube stage. We're not going to go into too much detail because there's a lot of ground to cover, but I've gone over this this territory before. So you can look back at previous tube, tube labs. Clarity tends to get a little lost because we're splitting the phase between at least two tubes per channel, but uh, quite often it's even four power tubes per channel. Um, Tubes, you're going to have a lot more tubes, and tubes are expensive. We're going to talk about that more in detail. Now, you can have separates. You can have a preamp and a power amp for either type. And you can have an integrated amp in which the preamp and power amp are combined for either type. So we could have done this and shuffled the cards. So with an integrated amp, you're always this is almost always going to be a more affordable option because you basically get your preamp and your power amp combined, right? It's not always going to be the case. There's always exceptions. Um, and with your separates, it generally speaking will cost more because you've got two chassis. That's a very general statement. You can find combos that will be cheaper than a great integrated amp. And you can, and vice versa. So let's look at the actual amps. So let's clean the decks here. Well, it's one deck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Charles, you want to grab the cards? Sure. There you go. There you okay. Go. So what do we got here? Let's get them all laid out so we can have a look at them.
Is everybody on camera? No, not quite. Hang on a second. We'll get you in there, speakers. Okay. So, we've got a regular room, and let's presume that you've got an average pair of almost efficient speakers. So they're not highly efficient, but they're not middling efficient, and they're certainly not low efficient. So they're about 93 dB, right? Somewhere around there. Don't forget that decibels is a logarithmic function, and even a small change in that dB number it makes huge differences for the amount of sound that you hear, or the loudness of the sound, I should say. That's right. So, uh, when we say close to 93 dB, we mean 92, 94. <laughs> and of course, the higher this number, the more efficient, and the lower the number, the less efficient. And if you've been listening to me over the past few years, you know that I've been advocating for more efficient speakers. I'm not going to go into any detail. I like them a lot better than low efficient speakers. I just find they're faster, they're more dynamic. They're, they're easier to drive. That's really what we want to talk about, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> so, what have we got? Here's a good option. Separates, in this case it's our kit amps, and it, this isn't a plug because there's an awful lot of really good uh, manufactured separates. It's just that it's easier for me to draw an amp I'm familiar with. So we put an E80cc preamp with the, the, the brand new GU50 uh, power amp. This is, so this monoblock is, is 8.25 8 watts RMS, I think, aside. Roughly this, about there, yep. That's what we came with. And the E80cc is an amazing preamp. It can drive pretty much any power amp. It's got a lot of power. It's very detailed, very fast. And that's not really down to me as a designer. That is the tube. The E80cc, that's that tube. That's just what it does. Same with the Sonics of the GU50. We really can't take too much credit for the sound of this amp. The, the GU50 tube, that's, that's its sound. It's just got amazing depth and clarity. That's a great sounding power tube, and the driver tube in it, the 6N6P, is a great driver tube as well. We've plugged it lots of time times on here. We just really like it. It was a happy day when we discovered that tube, and we're actually going to look at some of the early, rarer 6N6Ps that came in. Yeah, that's going to be coming up. Okay, so you could have separates, and that would work just fine. And the beauty of separates is that if you go with a modest powered separate lineup, you're not going to have very many tubes. Let's count the tubes. Two. <laughs> Two. <laughs> so you've got four. <laughs> and remember, in this age that we're in now of very rapidly diminishing quality vintage tubes, you need to accumulate spares. As much as your budget allows, put them in the bank. Your amplifier is not going to work without the tubes in it. Yep. Okay. What a lot of people are doing is they're buying sort of a middle of the road, beginning of the audiophile grade integrated amps. The R8 is a classic example of that. We've had one of these in our system for two years. We have it in our system mostly as a uh, commercial amp. So we're using it in the business and we use it to test quads of power tubes, 6550s, KT88s, EL34s. KT-77s. All sorts of these power tubes. It, it takes quite a few. And for us, um, as sellers of vintage tubes, it's really, really important that we actually listen to as many of our orders as possible. It weeds out problems, uh, and it saves us massive amounts of headaches. We almost never have returns as a result. Oh, if we screen these tubes for, for a decent amount of time, we almost always catch problems with them before they go out the door. Yep. And every once in a while, something slips through, but not very often. So the Wilsonton, what does it give you? Well, it's very affordable. We were just looking at it online, and it was $9.98 US. Which is just incredible for the build quality that you get and what you're getting in, in the integrated amplifier. Now, that's, I think, with the cheap stock tubes, which, you know, you can forget about. <laughs> uh, and I think it's got another 150 or $200 in shipping on top of that. Oh, it's heavy, yeah. <laughs> but you're going to pay to ship pretty much anything that weight. Um, so you get an integrated amplifier. They're well-made. 
they're big. Now that could be a plus or minus, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. The downside to the Wilsonton is that you've got nine tubes, and if you want this amp or any amp, doesn't matter which amp we're talking about, to sing, it needs quality tubes because the tubes oh, are the, the amplifier. amplifier. Yes. Everybody who corresponds with me has heard me say that 101 times. It's worth repeating until everybody repeats it because if we put crappy tubes in a great, great build, we're going to have crappy sound. That's just, there's no way around it. If we put amazing tubes into a crappy build, we're probably going to have amazing tubes in, in a crappy build that sound <laughs> crappy. So, right, so you got to put, the, you got, everybody gets this, right? You got to put everything together. If you can interconnect it with uh, uh, cables that you buy, you know, discounted from, um, the dollar store or something like that. Well, that's not a good example, but if you you bought them at your local hi-fi shop and it was the bottom of the line, cheapo cables, you know, two for one, <laughs> you're going to get cheapo sound. Okay, so what about a lot of the amps that are starting to come out now? Well, I'm going to nickname this guy or gal the Sexy Beast because it is huge. And it's got tubes. I mean, it's got more tubes than you can almost count. One of the tubes that I, one of the amps that recently came on the market has 12 tubes. Eight of them are power tubes. Now, if you're well off, and I mean really well off, you can pay the price of this amp and you can pay the price of putting quality tubes in this thing. And will it sound great? We don't know, but probably. Will it sound a lot better than a class A? This is going to be Class AB, by the way, folks. Will it sound better than a Class A? Well, it's going to depend on your music. If, if you like your music coming at you like a hurricane, if you're a rock and roller, then you probably are going to lean more in this direction over here. If you got the big bucks, you're going to lean over here. And if you're just the average audio connoisseur, then something like the Wilson Tin will get you in the door. And... What in the world are you going to do when you need new tubes, particularly vintage tubes, two, three, four, five years from now? You're not going to find them, or you're not going to find all vintage, so you're going to be buying new production. Do new production sound good? By and large, no, they don't. And I stay, we stay away from new production tubes like the plague. I've had so many bad experiences with them. Are there exceptions? Yes. If you carefully look at the reviews and what people say, you can find some new production tubes that are both sonically, they sound good, and mechanically they are built well and are reliable. But they are the exception to the rule, unfortunately, which is why we're in the vintage tube business and why you're probably watching this. So if you're an average person, really you should be leaning towards a Class A amp, with a, only a handful of tubes, or something that's very modestly priced like the Wilson Tin. A simpler integrated system. A simpler integrated system. You can get uh, integrated amps with quite a few fewer tubes than the Wilson Tin. Mm -hmm. And if you're really on a tight budget, you want a shop used. And here is the tip of the day, maybe of the year. Shop used for the amp and the tubes it contains combined because the tubes could be worth as much as the entire amp used or even twice as much. Now, the game a lot of resellers play is they pull the quality set of tubes that they retubed it with and they put the stock tubes back in. So essentially you're buying an amp with garbage tubes. But some sellers are generous. Some sellers just don't even know what they've got in their amp. Maybe they bought it used themselves. Those amps with quality tubes are amazing buys. In fact, some resellers of tubes actually buy used amps, vintage used amps for just not, for the tubes. Just for the tubes. And they'll part out the amp, of course. Mostly the iron. Mostly it's the output transformers they'll get some money for. Okay. Well, hopefully that helps everybody choose their next tube amp or their first one. Well, what's been going on over at Melatone Kits? Well, we think we found uh, 
a good woodworker to make up our chassis because the store and the kid amp business have just gotten so busy we either hire people and open a small factory or we start subcontracting some of the things that others can do for us and we're going to go the subcontract route because renting a small factory where in the city we live is just prohibitively expensive maybe someday we'll be big enough we can afford that but not today so that's taken care of our next step is to see if we can find a subcontractor to make our top plates that's going to be a little trickier um, but i'm hoping we can find somebody locally a lot of people make money on the side running cnc machines hey eh, charles yeah so we're hoping we can find somebody like that that's experienced and uh, and maybe interested in audio as well so we could have good rapport with them well that's the thing about the woodworker we found he is into audio oh yeah so he he really has a sense of what we're trying to achieve so we're really hoping that that relationship will work out well Okay, well, what came in this week? Well, a couple of really interesting things, and Charles is going to run you through them. Okay. Let's clear the decks. What have you got, Charles? So, we mentioned these guys earlier. Let me get them both on screen here. And what we have here is, of course, the 6N6P. And this is a dual triode. We've talked about it quite a bit before. It's a medium U, but it's quite a current pusher. And it's used in a few different amplifiers, including our GU50 as a driver tube. And this particular example is one of the earlier Photon made ones. And you can tell from a few different things, they have these, oh, I don't know if I can get that on camera, but they have square getters. There's a lot of chrome on these tubes on the inside here. And there's a few other little telltale signs, but that usually tells you right away that it's a Photon. Although Photon did make some with some round getter, so. Yeah, so there's a very minor construction detail that lets us figure out whether they're uh, NEVZs or, or Photons. Yeah, uh, it'll be hard to see on camera, but there's a little bit of a fold here right at the top of where the plate goes for the mica, and that's what we look for as well. Now, this is strictly a Soviet tube, right? Mm-hmm, and it was made in a few different plants in the Soviet Union. And there's some variety of it, but not a huge amount. But consistently, they've tested quite well, and they're, and they're very good tubes. Now, the interesting thing is you think this is a copy of another really well-known tube. I do. So I can't prove this, but there is, uh, I think, the 6N6P and the E80CC share a little bit of heritage. The E80CC is based off of an earlier Philips design, of course, the E80CC is also a Philips tube. And the very first version of the 6N6P that you can find that was made by Photon has identical construction to that earlier tube that Philips made. They're also very similar in almost every other respect. The E80CC is another medium mu dual triode, and it can push quite a bit of current. And they're both nine pin tall tubes. And the interesting thing about Soviet tube design and construction is they were aiming for a more general, broader electrical spec, right? Right. So they were looking for tubes that could do more than one thing. So you don't see a lot of medium U dual triodes in the Soviet Union. You see generally the 6N6P and what's the 6SN7 equivalent called? Um, oh, we've got a bit of it right here. So <laughs> it's the 6 h 8C. Yeah, or 6N8S if you want to convert it over. These things are always confusing. Essentially, it's a directly a copy of the 6SN7 and the, uh, the first production tubes were made during the Second World War on RCA equipment. Of course. That was for the 6SN7 tubes. So, yep. So, so, so that's where they came from. And then this was a, a Soviet development that came later that we, I think, is related to Philips. So that's kind of interesting. And this example here is really neat because we can see the original logo, maybe, on camera here. And that is saying that it was made in September of 63, I believe. But if we turn it around, we've got this almost, it looks like it's almost painted on here. It was probably done with a rubber stamp of some sort. And this is the inspector's mark. And you can see it was inspected X, that's 10. So that was October of the same year, 63. So that's really interesting to find on these tubes. So there's a photon and we've got some matched pairs of these and they're beautiful tubes. They test great. Um, 
I mean, really, there's nothing bad to say about 6N6Bs. We love them. Now, the one thing we don't know is, were these earlier square getter photons that so many people claim are the best sounding, well, how do they match up with the NEVZs, the later, more common version? So, so we're going to do a listening test on them. Maybe next week, might be the week after, but it's going to be coming up and you can decide for yourselves. Yeah, we'll do a high quality recording and hopefully we'll, we'll have an answer to that question. Mm -hmm. What else have you got, Charles? Ah. Oh, you have something special. In fact, we've been holding these back for a little while. We mentioned these a couple of weeks ago that we were doing a little bit more research on them. And we're not going to give everything away on them right now. So take a look at this guy. It's got quite an interesting logo on here. And that is an ECC81, which of course is a 12AT7 equivalent tube. And some of you may recognize the, the build of it. And this is an RFT tube. But it has a different logo than a standard RFT tube. And this came from a factory in East Germany called Funkwerk Erfurt. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It sounded really good to me. And that factory has a really interesting history that relates to a very famous German tube manufacturer that... And the factory itself goes all the way back to just before World War II. So I'm going to leave that up to your imagination. Maybe with a bit of research, you'll be able to figure it out. But we're going to go into more detail on these, the factory that they came from, and the history behind them next week. And how are they testing, Charles? And they're testing quite well. So you see we've got a matched pair here. Yeah, and on our tester, a 12AT7 normally tends to come in uh, new old stock at 90. So mm -hmm. anywhere around 90 is... Is basically a brand new and these were new these were, we found these new in the case yeah we found a new case of them which is you know it's fantastic whenever you find tubes in the case they're easier to match and they're all of the same type especially a high demand tube like the 12 at7 mm -hmm. so next week we're hoping to have a listen of these and uh, you can decide if you like them yourselves and we'll go into some more detail on them okay well thanks for doing that Charles well if you stay to the very end here's some discount codes to help you out remember we've got flat rate shipping of $20 around the world. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping is on us. And last week, we paid out some serious money. In fact, we're in March madness. March and April, particularly March, tend to be very, very, very busy months in the store. And the discounts are going out like crazy. So these are our standard discounts, but there's one most of you have been finding that sort of would be obvious if you spent a bit more money. <laughs> and that's been going out. And that is, that is it's, is it hurting? No, it's no, not, it's you're not hurting. No, us money. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not hurting. I actually like to see customers grab a discount. And there's a huge discount. If you spend some serious money, there is a bigger discount available. And nobody's found it yet. Which, that, I, for that, I think I'm grateful. <laughs> Anyways, stay safe, everyone. Have fun. This is Jim and Charles signing off. Cheers, everyone.